Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. We're back in chapter seven, sampling distributions. This time we're taking a look at the sampling distributions of sample proportions. Our learning objectives for this section are, find the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a sample proportion. In order for us to do that, we can only use the formula for the standard deviation if we check and we check the 10% condition and it meets the 10% condition. So remember the 10% condition is where the sample size can be no larger than 10% of the population size. Next, we wanna be able to determine the shape of the sampling distribution of sample proportions. We would love for it to be approximately normal. And so we will be checking the normal or large counts condition that we learned about in section one in order to determine if the shape is approximately normal. And if it is, then we're going to use normal procedures to calculate probabilities. The sampling distribution of the sample proportion, we know that we want to have an unbiased estimator of the population proportion. We know we want low bias, low variability. That's our definition or our description of an unbiased estimator. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look, so you can see an example of a Reese's Pieces machine that has a proportion of orange candies of 45%. That's a relatively large proportion, it's almost half. So we draw a sample of size 25 and we end up with a sample proportion p hat of 48%. Now we run the simulation, we take 400 samples and just a notation here, you can see that pi is sometimes used for the population parameter for proportion of proportion. Okay, so we take 400 samples and then we end up graphing the approximate sampling distribution. We end up having a mean of the sampling distribution of 0.448, very close to our population parameter, and a standard deviation that is quite small of 0.103. Then we take a larger sample size, still with the same population parameter of 45% orange candies, and still take 400 samples. We can see on both of these graphs, the center of the sampling distribution is very, very close to the population parameter or the true parameter, true value of 0.45, or I'm sorry, of 45%. We can also see, if you notice the scale on the left graph compared to the scale on the right graph, that larger sample size gave us a narrower distribution. So the scale is different because the standard deviation decreased, bringing all those points closer to the center. That's what a standard deviation will uh, describe. And then that narrowing, so we can use a slightly different scale. Now let's try changing the population parameter. This time we have a population parameter of 15% orange candies, sample size of 25. We take a sample and you can see we have a p hat or a sample proportion of 24% orange candies. When we take 400 samples, we end up with this dot plot that all seems to be blending together. It doesn't really look like dots anymore, but we can see that our mean of the Sampling, approximate sampling distribution is very close to 15%. Standard deviation is quite small. Now, let's take 400 samples, this time a sample size of 50, still with that same population parameter of 15%, and we see our mean of our sampling distribution, 0.149, again, very, very close, even closer to our population parameter of 15%, orange candies, and a very low standard deviation, 0.048. We want to be able to describe the shape, center, and spread of the sampling distribution. In terms of shape, we would love for it to be normal. We want it to be normal. So we're going to, as we saw, the shape of the distribution is altered or modified based on the sample size and based on the population proportion. So, We'll talk more about that later, but for now, just keep that in the back of your mind. In terms of the center, the center of the sampling distribution, mu sub p hat, is always equal to p, the population proportion. This makes sense. That's what 
we want our unbiased estimator of population proportion to be able to do. We want it to be the same. And then in terms of spread, for any specific value of p, the standard deviation of the sampling proportion, sigma sub p hat, gets smaller as the sample size gets larger. So we know that that value of the standard deviation is going to depend both on the sample size and on the population proportion. There's an important connection between the sample proportion and the number of successes in the sample. And, and us for, for us to be able to calculate the sample proportion, it's going to be the number of successes in the sample divided by the sample size n. We have some formulas that we're going to be using for the sampling distribution. We have the formulas that we learned back in chapter six for the mean and the standard deviation of a binomial random variable x. And we can see those listed here. Mu sub x is equal to n times p and sigma sub x is equal to the square root of n times p times one minus p. Or the sample size times the proportion, uh, probability of success times the probability of failure. And we know that p hat is x or the number of successes over n. We can rewrite that as one over n times x. And then we just multiply and we can see we end up having this formula mu sub p hat is equal to one over n times n p, which results in p. So mu sub p hat is equal to p. In words, we would say p has an unbiased estimator or it's equal to of p. Then we have sigma sub p hat. And again, plug in for the our substitution and we end up having this formula sigma sub p hat is equal to the square root of p times one minus p over n. These formulas are on the formula sheet. So mean, spread, and shape. Just a reminder, before we calculate the standard deviation, we're going to check the 10% condition and make sure that the sample size is not too big. As far as the shape goes, we want it to be approximately normal, but in order for us to check if it's approximately normal, we're going to use n times p must be greater than 10 and n times one minus p must be greater than 10. This can be called either the normal condition or the large counts condition. And if you think about what the sample size times the probability of success means, it's basically how many successes did you have? And likewise, how many failures did you have? Both of those need to be greater than 10, which means you need to have a big enough sample and you need to have uh, in combination with the, a, a large enough proportion. Okay, let's take a look at the sampling distribution of p hat. We have a population proportion p. We take many samples of size n. For each of the samples, we're going to calculate a p hat, a sample proportion, and then we're going to graph all the values of p hat. We know that the center of the sampling distribution of p hat is going to be mu sub p hat is equal to p the population proportion, and we know the standard deviation can be calculated by the square root of p times one minus p over n. That is our standard deviation of our sampling distribution. Okay, that is it for this section. And take a look at the different objectives that we did meet Remember that the devil is in the problem solving. So even though we've talked about all of the concepts that you need to know, it becomes super important that you uh, are able to implement each one of those piece parts and the conditions as you're carrying out the problems, as you're working through those problems. So bring questions to class. See you then.